Hello, strategists, generals and soldiers of the Second World War. Welcome back to Panzerkorps Gold and playing hardball. And the raid at Gironde. Or rather, around Bordeaux. Where, like in real history, 12 commandos damaged a number of ships. So, And I guess we are running into way more than 12 uh, commandos here. So let's prepare for them. Our pioneers, yeah, that's expensive. It is very expensive. How much is this actually? 52. Yeah, I shouldn't have attacked the uh, that destroyer last time. And by the way, so let's have a look. The good news is that our Heinkel bomber gained quite some experience by th uh, by sinking the uh, these cruisers and the other ships. Well, and I have to say that that I quite enjoyed the the sinking of this carrier. So. Let's leave these tanks around there. Well, yeah, I think here the B1, let's actually get free replacements. And then we are disbanding this one. Someone else can use it. And we get, wow, yeah, quite some uh, reputation for that. Same goes for this puck. I don't like puck. It's too inflexible. Let's get replacements for free and then also disband this one. Won't give much. Yeah, well, 390 nearly. This one here, I mean, could we actually get something useful from it? No, not really. So I'm really not a big fan of the anti-tank units here that are available. But we could maybe keep it around. So here you guys, however, artillery is always great. Oh, and getting replacements with them is really costly, yeah, but we want to maintain our two-star experience. And let's make them over strength, so, so we can quickly react. These guys, yeah, we don't need to pay anything like for these 10 points. It doesn't matter so much. Then you guys, our good old BF, yeah, for 10 experience points, paying 20 pre uh, 23 pre uh, prestige, that's not worth it. Also, we are not losing our experience star. So this, however, is already, yeah, this will speed up the thing. Yeah, well, so. Well, we can only deploy uh, 16 anyway, so we are, we are way above what we can get. But uh, I guess we can just keep these tanks around. I also like to to have a certain collection, you know, of looted equipment. Um, I like to look at them. I have to say I really like the design of these uh, British tanks. Um, yeah. It, uh, in so far, it's a pity that we couldn't loot one of these Rolls-Royce uh, recon vehicles, right? So they had quite some style, in my opinion. Yeah, so not sure if we actually should invest any anything here into these guys, uh, like making them over strength. But let's uh, so let's let's keep it like this for the moment. Uh, well, of course, the tanks, you guys. Yeah, we can invest 20 and then here 41. Basically for 40. Oh, it's the experience. Huh? Prestige 41 and the uh, the loss of experience is also like uh, exactly 41. Is there is there actually a connection there? We would lose 10. No, but here it's 28. No, I, I guess this is just like coincidence. Uh, let's get let's get the uh, elite replacements over there with these guys as well back to 10 the bomber is surely the the most uh, uh, the most expensive thing but it's also a good thing to have them in a very strong condition 
So now that we don't have to face any enemy uh, planes, which I find not very convincing. So I bet they will have something because they control two airfields, right? That doesn't make any sense. But well, let's see. Let's see what they have in store for us. So we have to use two separate little armies. One to go up here to take control of the city of or the airfield up here close to Big Garden or Big Adon. And then our second probably uh, more powerful army needs to be here. Going for Montagne sur Gironde. All right, so and this is like a very nasty uh, area here. A very nasty area with all this bocage. So I guess like here, this is, this here is better tank country, but it's all rather nasty. Which means that we we will have to uh, have recon. Recon is the key. And so far it's a pity that we had to sell our other recon, right? Someone is enjoying them very much right now, I guess. Our Sonderkraftfahrzeug. But I think it was a good deal. So and I'm also not such a big fan of this tank. So maybe we should buy one. And otherwise with this one here. Yeah, they only have a range of one, so that's the thing. So I like I came to like the Sturmpanzer, as you guys remember, on the Eastern Front. Um also well, I, I had hoped that there would be a, another model of it, like an, an improved model or something, but it never never came. So in the end, uh, I, I bought this one rather late. But of course, it's uh, it's not such a bad thing because it's more flexible. So no. OK. We just got the option to get the, the Fokker Wolf and then I think the here the Stug, right? And the better tank though, however, yeah, we can actually upgrade the tanks, right? It was uh, it was Panzer 4G. Oh yeah, okay, and this is actually an, a significant upgrade. So let's do that. Did we just lose the excess strength points? I think so, right? Yeah. Well, these guys L and M. Yeah, so they are better. Yeah, let's upgrade them like this. And then these guys, 4G as well. So, and I think we can just leave it like that. So I I think we are rolling uh, without overstrength with our tanks and others who are, who, with whom we can actually expect to have higher losses, right? I mean, m maybe we should take the pioneers here. Or you guys, you are rather cheap, actually. So let's have overstrength Fallschirmjäger. Wehrmacht is also rather cheap. Yeah, let's give it to them. Oh, and by the way, they finally they can get a better vehicle here. Oh, but uh, that's also costly. Um, hmm. Are we actually deploying them? Yeah, we are. So we only we lost one unit of pioneers as well. That's the problem. And I think we need we need three pioneers, of course. We'll have three here in each city, just for defensive purposes, but also to go forward. And we have 483. Yeah, let's get pioneers. Need to replace them. Let's get them with the with this vehicle. This one is of course better way better but more expensive so let's do it like this you guys well there let's put them here where they are least exposed although here this will probably i guess i guess the the brunt of the attack will come from here because it's uh, closer to their forces right let's have you guys there you guys there or even or even rather in the bocage we 
you guys have the better spotting right let's have you guys sitting here then let's have the bomber that has a side range of two here let's have a fighter yeah let's buy one more so they can be more useful against ground targets as well let's have them here that way we see a little bit more yeah like there we're using the strategic bomber there and let's use another fighter with over strength oh and now we are already down at 74 there to check out this area let's see so planes are essential against uh, the enemy tanks then let's have artillery oh and rather here our fallschirmjäger they can go maybe here oh well actually yeah then we put the wehrmacht here and our fallschirmjäger there and then no guys ah guys what are you doing so here let's have them on the ground for the beginning let's have a tank do we have anybody who can actually look a little bit further no but i think this here is probably the best country for tanks and we might even be able to uh, once we have taken over this area here we might even be able to uh, do a little amphibious t landing with the other tanks once we've secured this one here but who knows where any commandos will pop up right and that's the big question so maybe they are already sitting here which is why we probably should put the Wehrmacht there and then they can actually quickly drive up we have 74 can we actually for 74 can we get this one no yeah, i don't want to sell anything else because we don't know what's happening i mean the crusader is not not a good tank in comparison to our other tanks especially now the new models but I want to keep it so but then I guess you guys stay defensive and once we've cleared or made sure that this area here is actually free of enemies uh, and I think our planes can do the job you guys you go here and then we'll just fly here and then we can make reasonably sure that there's no one there so and then let's have one tank there don't we have any tanks over here just that one yeah and let's have the kv1c here Although there's like really a lot of uh, a lot of forest around. By the way, let's directly compare them again with the with the Churchill. So they are he's got four four two nine initiative and the churchill has four to seven initiative okay and then six twelve zero one six twelve zero one so this one is a bit better the russian one is a bit better against soft targets and then we have 22 14 4 22 14 4 uh, 20 14 4 right yeah so the churchill is slightly better armored okay so like in a tank battle the churchill would have an advantage against the kv1c but let's deploy this one here because it's uh, it has more strength now well we could of course replace these guys 
Well, I mean, on the other hand, it would be a fitting to use a Churchill ride against these guys. But on the other hand, there are uh, surely commandos and other stuff. So let's have the KV-1C here. So there we go. Then we can deploy five more units. Let's have artillery, you guys. Can be here in the bocage maybe. And then you guys here. And I expect this one here to be li a little bit more static and also the enemy can't go anywhere. So let's have one artillery there. And yeah, now things aren't looking so good. So could have one one more fighter. Uh, for recon purposes. Now let's have that one. So because it's also over strength. And then we can send one more unit out. Well, actually, let's use the Churchill. So let's give it elite replacements. I guess that's the best we can do. And it's not getting through the bocage, I guess. Two tanks there. Yeah, that's really bad. Very bad situation, but let's have, yeah, let's put them there. So like this, very tank heavy, this thing, but uh, I guess that's the best we can do. Okay then, so this is how we can roll with our limited resources. Let's end the turn. Oh, they have the initiative. Okay, they just take over. All right. So there were tanks there. So you guys fly here and then that way we make sure that no one is here, right? Okay, good. No one's there. No, good. Okay, no one's there. That's good. Can these guys move? No. Someone laid mines here, naval mines, for some reason. And we have 18 turns. Okay, the Churchill drives up. And then you drive up. Or do we see nothing? Okay. Then you guys drive up. Aha, there's someone. Regular British infantry, okay. Yeah, we are using them on the ground. Although, although on the other hand, uh, let's dis let's embark them. Oh yeah, and we actually we only have you to embark anybody so let's see if our information was actually correct right no by the way sorry it is stupid hey eh? oh did i just uh, mess up the move huh well then i just thought that uh that just wa letting them walk up uh, is better because these guys will probably go into the forest anyway and then we just uh, lose one turn. But now, now we have to fly like this. So and if uh, any fighters are coming up, then, well, it's not us to blame, right? So then here there's a huge area. can't really know if there's someone there or not but yeah we have to trust that no one's here let's fly our plane like there it's a forward observer ah, yeah okay so there we have the matilda okay 
So they brought some tanks. They have the strategic bomber flying in, bombing the Matilda and losing pres uh, making the enemy lose prestige. And now the Matilda has seven of nine ammo. So basically it doesn't matter anything, but whatever. So let's drive up the KV. And now we are actually in a very uh, unfortunate situation here. He can just drive around. Ah, but it's fortunately this is like a very slow tank. Okay. And they don't know that we are here. One, two, three. So let's drive there. Quite the risky move in case they have more. They brought more tanks, but well. And I think no one should be able to get into this Bokash here, right? So let's drive our Wurfram there. And you guys go there. Okay, that's enemy free zone. Okay, also enemy free zone. You guys drive up like so getting artillery support and you guys that's regular infantry fly there check out the area a little bit more okay so we do have engineers here and more British infantry bomb them very nice shot and then these we can't use anyway. Yeah, and you guys, well, there's no one here. So let's actually... Yeah, it feels very risky and I don't like it that we don't know what's going on here, all in these dark areas. But let's drive here. Or rather... Yeah, no, let's drive there. So we can defend just in case someone comes up from here. And the next turn they will march like there just to make sure that no one is on this side of the river. And I guess we could even put them here in case someone comes from these hills. But actually it would not be logical at all if someone came here. Well, maybe paratroopers or something. But well, so. That's the thing. Let's see what the enemy does. Ah, oh, yeah. They do. They brought some something. Oh yeah, they brought quite a lot. Okay. Oh, and it's raining. It's going to rain, huh? That's just great. So, are you guys in range? Yeah, very good. So we can make a little run on these uh, infantry guys. This here is a Humber AC. Okay. So can we actually, if we attack him with two and this guy, it's also two, so it doesn't matter. So you just fly up there. Okay, that was unsuccessful. Another run, yeah, let's shoot these guys. Only one. Oh, what's that? An M7 Priest artillery piece. Okay, that's very nasty. Okay. And what's that? An M5 Steward, an upgrade of the M3. So, I guess at least. Uh, so. Let's shoot the infantry. There are five. And then you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's really bad. And now they, we can't do anything. Yeah, and that's the thing. We could have attacked them if I hadn't gone on the plane and I could have uh, canceled this move. But well, so we've weakened the infantry. So let's mess up these guys. Oh, nice shot. Okay, good. 
and yeah, of course we have to stay here now. So that was that was just the failure. Oh, uh, on the other hand, you can actually go here and mess them up very nicely. So let's do that. What's that? Oh, with Sherman. MK1. Okay, that's not so good. So they brought really a lot of stuff. These 12 commandos. Well, you guys, yeah, will block this area. And of course, well, we want to destroy these guys before they cause trouble. Now that we have an advantage, okay, should, should have been eight. And then, yeah, you guys just stay there. Our Falchimiga have an advantage here and they can just stay there. I'd like them to be here, however, but then they would just go forward. So Churchill, let's see how they perform with our honorable Nazi cross, Nazi Wehrmacht cross over there. Oh, nice attack. Very nice. Good. Yeah, and they don't have anything. So they, they are probably wondering if uh, any Churchills had been exported to Nazi Germany by the, the royal British family or something. So here we are actually, oh, that's actually nice. No, it's not. Why, can't, why is this such a bad attack? Like in the forest, because you guys are totally inexperienced, right? So instead, what could we do? I think we need a strategic strike. No, that's, that uh, won't have any effect. Uh, you guys, however, or oh, also not. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that's actually not so good. Uh, what to do? And then you? No. You don't want to use our expensive tanks. Well, then let's look firstly on this side. Maybe something happens that's fortunate for us. You guys do have nine attack. And maybe we should mess them up. Well, yeah, obviously that's the only thing that we can really do. Let's shoot them. Okay, at least the standard damage. And then you mess them up for seven. Yeah. Yeah, let's provide flanking. Only five. Not good. Going forward. Another priest. Well, they really brought they brought more stuff even like than in Dieppe. And I'm a bit afraid that these guys will just go around. They could probably, right? No, that's uh No, I think the the Bukash, how is it? Like the li let's have a look at the library terrain. Where's the Bukash? Close. Okay, no, that's not that. Movement, Bukash cost everything for wheeled vehicles all right okay so we should be fine if we go here you guys go there for what defense yeah so they brought more stuff than during the Dieppe invasion Yeah, we shouldn't go into the forest here. So we can just wait it out, actually. They can't shoot at us. Yeah, let's... Uh, let's just let's just shoot them up. Do they have any anti-air? No. Should have been two. Yeah, I think you guys... You just go forward and well maybe he's th we are we are actually tempting them so they don't know about our Wurfram. Yeah, the only one who can really attack them is our Heinkel. But we won't do anything to them. Most likely at least. Ah, yeah, let's finish them off. 
Oh, come on. It should have been five and we only got one. Yeah, well, but we already know about that, right? So, um, let's. Yeah, maybe we get lucky. So I guess this is like the best that we can do at the moment. Oh yeah, nice, we got lucky, okay. So like, oh, what's that? HMS Tuna. Oh, submarine. Oh. Okay, I wonder if it's going to move around. Okay, we are surely sinking that one. It has 20 strength so this submarine must have brought all of these uh, tanks in right so it's a special submarine they have reconsidered that 12 commandos uh, are not enough to damage the ship so and then they brought all the tanks i guess um Yeah, and we shouldn't open up too much. On the other hand, one four. Actually, I think we should stay here and then. Now yeah, we want to be in the open though. Yeah, but we need to take care of these guys as well. So let's just stay there, I guess. We can we can just. Uh, Yeah, there's no good position right now. Would be better to be here and then we could have a shot with our Wolfram. We can't shoot at ships. Of course we can shoot at ships. Ah, but we can't shoot at submarines. Huh? Okay, well, let's see. Well, but I think yeah, we can just stay like this. And this is where this episode ends. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any knowledge of the raid of Bordeaux, you know any good web pages, for example, please provide the link in the comment section. I'd love it to discuss this stuff. Okay, of, co of, of course, this is all like pure fantasy here. But yeah, I mean, it's also quite kind of fun to see these uh, units here. It's actually pretty cool, the priest and stuff. And yeah, I wonder what's about with this submarine, but we'll, we are going to find out, I guess. Um, however, rain is coming, which is quite bad because we have four planes in the air, which is considerable in terms of invested prestige here, but we'll see. So thanks for watching again. I would appreciate if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel, channel if you haven't done so yet, so you never ever miss an episode again. And if you are interested in the situation in the Pacific right now, because this is 1942, although yeah, here with this mission, we are a bit ahead and of time, but chronologically uh, uh, in, with my let's play of strategic mind, the Pacific, uh, we are just playing the uh, Japanese campaign and are about to invade well we are like that that stuff that is uh, online right now um and the bottleneck unfortunately is the upload speed uh, that i am suffering from thanks to my provider at the moment um but what's online uh, is the the attack of the japanese on uh, the philippines the philippines that the united states had annexed from the Spanish Empire yeah so actually like I uh, or, well maybe I should uh, tell a little bit about all of this because I did some reading and the situation uh, has broadened itself for me person for me personally um because I was considering the United States just more like the good guys basically yeah? maybe the most democratic ones at this point uh, in 1942 and they probably were but on the other hand, like looking out of the eyes, you know, t taking the perspective of the other powers like Nazi Germany or the Japanese, for example, or the other powers, uh, the United States were not really different because they just had annexed in, uh, in 1898. They just had annexed Hav Hawaii. It wasn't that long ago, actually, after overthrowing the uh, rightful queen of Hawaii. Yeah, and then they just annexed the islands. 
And then they fought a battle uh, against the Spanish Empire, took over the Philippines, yeah. And then uh, the, there was a, there was a revolt against their rule, of course, which they put down bl quite bloodily as well, like 1901, two and stuff, yeah, around that area uh, in time. So that's also not so long ago. Um, so in uh, in my opinion, this this whole thing here, it was more like the uh, the struggle between all these powers, yeah, the big powers. The United States uh, beginning to establish an empire for themselves. Yeah, the only good thing is uh, apparently or was apparently that the United States probably had the least, uh, like in comparison to these other powers here, uh, they had the least uh, exploitative uh, goal probably. Yeah, I I would think. Yeah, and uh, you have to admit that uh, they actually let the Philippines get independent. So there was actually a strong program to prepare these countries for independence while remaining partners, although it, it appears that the Philippines uh, were never really a sovereign country afterwards because uh, like the defense and uh, other policies, they were st uh, strictly under US control after that uh, as well. Uh, so and like the very negative interpretation would of course be that the United States didn't want to have to bother with the uh, with the politics they should administer themselves while they maintained the the foreign policy yeah and kept control basically of the area yeah um that's a way to look at it of course so but yeah this this whole project here the let's play uh, you know my part of my goal not just to have fun while playing the game is to understand some more and learn some more and see a bigger picture here and uh, that that goal I am I personally am certainly reaching yeah and uh, if you want to share any knowledge I would appreciate that uh, greatly and I'm sure the community will uh, would and will appreciate that too so please don't hesitate to write anything that you know especially well, as most of the of my viewers are of the Anglo-American hemisphere, of course, um, you certainly learn some stuff in school, for example, or you do some reading for yourself, uh, which is, of course, another perspective than, for example, my German European one and or like a Japanese one, for example. Yeah, so and so far, I think the, this whole project here can be pretty p beneficial just to understand better what was going on then because uh, th that time here around the world where that is of course quite uh, forming uh, our present as well, right? So, and of course, yeah, what's going on with Russia and Ukraine at the moment, for example, th those are also uh, the results of, you know, of a whole process. And that process didn't start here with the first, uh, with the second world war, of course, Yeah. so. That being said, let's end this, uh, end this episode here. We will continue next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.